On my first summer back home from freshman year of college, I picked up a part-time job delivering pizza in a town around 30 minutes away from where I lived. The area in rural Georgia is known for having places that are in the middle of nowhere. And the pizza place's whole shtick was that it delivered to even the most remote areas imaginable within the town limits. I could fill books with the weird experiences that summer. From the call that came from a long abandoned warehouse, to a dog that got excited about the pizza in my hand and accidentally shredded my pants with her claws. But one will always stand out to my mind as the creepiest. It was getting fairly late at night, around 10.30pm, so I was confident at that time that I would be sent on no further calls before closing at 11. However, someone barely managed to miss the cutoff time, and our clerk accepted their order since they were so close. I was given the address and a single box of hot dough and sent on my merry little way. The first red flag was the driveway, or rather the lack thereof. There is a mailbox, but no actual driveway, not even gravel. It was only grass, and a barely distinguishable trodden pathway that resembled more of a service trail than it did something frequently used. I bumped along, wondering if I was even en route to the place when I saw a slightly above average sized home come over the horizon, horribly dilapidated and completely surrounded by overgrown woods. I guesstimated where the rest of the driveway led, and I ended up parking in a grassy patch that could have been the walkway, just as easily as it could have been the front yard. Headlights aimed towards the porch, as per company policy. I walked up to the door, but I believe that calling it a door is generous. It was a door frame all right, but the door itself was just a large slab of wood, propped haphazardly against the side of the house, barely covering the entrance. This was red flag number two. The third and fourth red flag were also on the door. This included the A4 sheet of printer paper with the words, around back, scribbled in all caps, which was hanging just below the place where somebody had self-engraved the door with the title, Manson Family Ranch. Typically, I would never go around the back of a house, especially a shady, unlit house, and especially at night. However, it was my last drop-off of the day, and I was ready to get it over with and be on my way home. Against my better judgment, I went around to the back of the house. The back door here was an actual door, but it was covered in both cobwebs and fresh spiderwebs. Clearly, this was a door that hadn't been used in some time. I found the cleanest area available and I knocked. I counted to 45, and I knocked again. There were no lights on in the house and I could hear no movement from inside. I knocked and I counted again, and repeated the sequence three more times before I was finally creeped enough to decide to return to my car. As I turned, I finally heard a voice coming from inside of the house, clearly agitated, but I couldn't tell what they were saying. I tried to knock one more time, and as I was counting, I heard something in the woods behind me. It started out as just movement deep in the trees, but soon enough, I could make out distinct running footsteps coming directly towards me through the brush. As I'm standing there, coming to terms with my impending demise, I followed the direction of the noise to the edge of the woods, which is around 15 feet away from me. In the moonlight, I could clearly see the woman who stepped out. She was relatively old, maybe in her 60s, I would guess. She had long, blonde gray hair, which was tangled and matted and hung down past her hips. She was in what looked to be originally a white nightgown, but at the time, it was dingy and closer to a beige brown color. She was barefoot, and her feet were covered in dirt and what had to be blood. Presumably due to the fact that she had just sprinted through the prickly woods where there was no trail to be seen. I never learned her name, but I still affectionately referred to her as Red Flag Number 5. She stopped short when she saw me and started to shake her head, no, eyes wide. I stood there like a terrified deer in the most messed up headlights ever as she took a few more steps towards me, reaching out to me, finger pointed. 
Her voice came out, way stronger than mine would have at the time when she spoke. You know how southern people can either sound like loving grandmothers or backwood murderers. Well, she sounded like the latter when she drawled. Oh, no, 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 honey. No, you get on, you get. Get on out of here. I wish I could say that. I listened. That I ran, I laughed. But I was so in shock at how the events were playing out that my own self-preservation was put on the back burner while I tried to figure out just what the heck was happening. She seemed to realize that I was not moving. Even if I could not make my mouth move to ask her what was happening, or even what to do with this stupid pizza in my hands. She looked like she could smack the heck out of me right then and there, and proceeded to deliver red flags 6 through 12. Darling, did you hear me? Are you deaf or dumb? Young girls like you come out here and then they don't get to leave. So, I finally quit being the stereotypical person in a horror movie when I realized that this was not a funny little ghost story. This was 5'3", 116 pound me potentially being targeted to be robbed or kidnapped or worse. So I dropped the dumb little pizza and started running back to my car, which I had stupidly left on and unlocked, as was usual for most of my deliveries. As I neared the car, I heard a slam from behind me, and I looked over my shoulder to see that the wooden door had been pushed over and had fallen into the porch beneath it. As I closed the car door, an older man was limping down the front steps, waving his arms like a freaking airplane runway attendant at me, calling me horrible things and telling me to get out of the car now. At a loss for what to do, I called out something muttery and shaking and along the lines of, uh, the pizza's out back. I floored my dad's crappy little 90s Lexus and somehow managed to avoid trees on the odd trail back to the main road, which was still 12 miles and several turns from any road that actually had a name let alone painted lines. I reported it to my manager and he said that he contacted police, but nothing ever came of it that I'm aware of. Either way, that was my first and hopefully last personal encounter with the self-proclaimed Manson Family Ranch. I'm a 28-year-old male, but this happened when I was about 23. I worked at a mom and pop pizza shop in Northern California. It's a small farm town and has a few suburbs near it. I kind of did everything since I knew the family and they trusted me running things while they were gone. This night though, I was working deliveries and got the weirdest one of my life. Everything seemed fine when I took the order. The lady ordered anchovies on her pizza and I always think people who order that are weird as crap. She made it a point to tell me the pizza had to be hot when it got there, or she wouldn't pay for it. So, I get the pizza, I throw it in the warmer, and I drive to her house before any of my other deliveries. I would like to tell you guys that her house was creepy and run down, but it looked like your average one-story new housing development home. I rang the doorbell and put on my fake customer service smile. Y'all know what I'm talking about. As soon as she opens the door... I knew this was going to be bad. The haggard old lady who looked like she was a smoker of 50 plus years looked me dead in the eyes and said, It better be hot or I'm not paying like I told you over the dang phone. I understand ma'am. I made sure to stop by your place first even though it was last on my list. Bring it in and set it on the table. She said this, and now I normally didn't go inside customers homes because I've read way too many stories on no sleep and let's not meet. But at this point, I'm just wanting to kill her with kindness and see where this will go, so I say, yeah, no problem. I also brought cheese and ranch for you if you need it. As soon as I opened the bag, she grabbed the box and her hand was on the bottom of it, just rubbing it. It's not hot enough. You do this every time and I'm not paying for this. Not a single dime. One thing that I have is an issue with my mouth. I don't know when to just shut up and try to understand where people are coming from. Look lady, your house is a 5 minute drive from our shop, and I stopped by your place first. There is no way that your pizza is cold. If you refuse to pay it, you're gonna get 86, and I'll notate it on your account. She immediately walked into our kitchen and came back out. She had an old pizza from a few weeks prior she had ordered from us and threw it at me. Take your freaking pizza. 
and get out of my house. You're the devil. She yelled at me and kept calling me Satan and the devil. Again, my mouth has no filter and I can't control it. I try, but I fail every time. As I'm closing the bag and laughing about how much I hate my job, I tell her, All right, ma'am. You will not be able to order pizza from us again. I hope you have a great day and God bless you and your house. She kept following me outside to my car screaming, You're the devil. And there are families out there just watching this go down. So, I get into my car and I start driving. Once I'm back, I tell my manager what happened. And she told me that the lady had already called in and screamed to her about what had happened. Her story was that I had cussed her out and I got her order wrong. My manager shut her down and said that I would never do anything like that. But here's the weird part. She whispered into the phone to my manager and repeated, Send him back. Send him back. Send him back. She would call once a day for almost three months, just whispering this to whoever answered. She started driving by the restaurant and yelling, The devil works here. You're all gonna burn. No, I wasn't scared. I was just upset and I wanted to retaliate. Because I can't tell you how many times she tried to follow me back to my apartment when I got off of work. One night, I pulled over and I got out just for her to stop her car in the road with her lights on yelling, The devil is here. After this, I jumped back in my car and I sped off. Luckily, after six months of dealing with this lady, I found out that she was schizophrenic and bipolar and she hadn't been on her meds. Her daughter eventually put her in a care home, but when she was cleaning out her house, she saw that her mom had pictures of me all over her bedroom wall with the word, yep you guessed it, devil written all over it. She eventually found me and explained everything to me, and that was the end of it all. This was years ago, when I was 16 or 17. I'm 32 now, and I was recently talking to someone about this and how in retrospect, it was a pretty creepy experience. I grew up in a small town a ways outside of San Diego. My parents let me get a job at this pizza place because a couple of family friends had also worked there, and our town was generally viewed as safe. The pizza place had no real adhering to laws about what one should wear in a kitchen or restaurant environment. And since it was usually over 100 degrees in the summer, I often just wore tank tops and skirts. I delivered an order to this apartment in the middle of town above a business that was perpetually closed, and the guy was probably in his early to mid-30s. I remember thinking at first he was kind of attractive in an older guy type of way. Super tan, tattoos, no shirt on, and he had really blue eyes. He asked me to bring the order inside so he could get the cash and I did. Again, in retrospect, it was really dumb. I went into his apartment and remember that he was just kind of looking at me like he was eating me with his eyes. He asked me a few questions about myself, like how long I had been working there and so on. And then he poured two shots of whiskey and me being dumb, I was like, oh, cool, thanks. I did the shot with him. It's stupid, yes. A lot of my coworkers would get offered to smoke a bowl, etc. during delivery, so I was like, oh, why not? And then he started pressuring me for my phone number, asking when I got off work. I told him that I had a boyfriend when he asked for my number, but he was persistent and really wanted me to come over after I got off work. He also kept being really pushy asking if my hair was naturally red, looking me up and down and so on. He was asking what time I got off, telling me that he would come pick me up. I eventually left and I went back to work, thinking, wow, that was kind of weird. Nothing ever came of it, but I always got a sort of a sinking in my pit of my stomach whenever I drove by that apartment. I had told my manager that he was trying to get my phone number and to come over after work, so he wouldn't let me drop off any orders from that guy anymore. I think about how dumb I was to A, go into that apartment and then B, take that shot. Thank goodness I wasn't stupid enough to go there after work or something too. So this happened approximately two years ago, and I almost completely pushed it out of my mind until I was reading some other people's posts here. So anyway, about three years ago, my mom and stepdad separated, 
and her and my sister moved out into a new place. It's a decent neighborhood. Not like a nice neighborhood, but it's a safe one. It's quiet with mostly elderly people and younger families. So moving in, I never felt unsafe. And since the incident, I haven't either. But probably about six months after we moved in there, there were a couple of strange occurrences. One night, my mom was out for the night because she works as a relief worker for a woman's shelter and the hours are pretty sporadic. So, I'm 16 at the time and I stay home with my 10 year old sister to watch her. At like 9.30, I order us a pizza because we're watching a movie together and hey, I'm a nice sister. Like 15 minutes later, I notice some lights outside of my house and I assume that it's the pizza guy. Which is a little weird because they're never this fast but I wasn't about to complain. So, I get up to the window to just check and see a small blue car pulled up in the side of the road in front of my house, turned off. But the driver isn't making any move to get out of the car or any movement at all. They're just staring straight ahead. At this point, I still think it's the pizza guy and I'm like, come on man, get out of the car and give me my pizza. But he just keeps sitting there. Eventually, I realize this guy is not here to give me a pizza. So, I sit back down and I just figure he's waiting for my neighbors to get home. Another 20 minutes pass and the pizza actually arrives. At which point, I start getting uncomfortable because I notice the car is still parked outside my house and the guy has seemingly not moved. Like, let me explain. It's not like this person was sitting still casually in their car or playing on their phone or listening to music like a normal person would while they wait for someone. But instead, sitting straight upright with their arms rigid out in front of them on the steering wheel. Additionally, the pizza guy asked me if I knew the guy in the car. Before saying that, he had pressed his face up against the window and stared at him as he walked by and approached my front door. So, I just take my pizza and I eat. Eventually, my sister falls asleep and I turn everything off and I go upstairs. Every hour or so, I go back to check if the car and the man inside are still parked outside of my house. And every time they are. And he's still sitting there the exact same way. Until I check again at around 2am. Now he's moved from the driver's side of the passenger seat and has his chin resting on his hand. Looking out the window which is facing towards my home. I start getting really weirded out at this point but still, I don't do anything convincing myself that I'm overreacting. So, I go back upstairs and I wait another hour and a half before checking again. It's like 3.30 at this point, and I think maybe the guy is waiting for me to fall asleep so he can break in and rob us or something, I'm not sure. So this time, instead of leaving the lights off when I pulled the curtain to check if he was still there, I turned them on so he would know that I was still up. I also held my phone up to my ear, hoping he would think that I was calling the cops and he would leave. I didn't actually call the police because I figured it's not technically illegal to park on the road outside someone's house and I didn't want it to turn out to be nothing. At this point, he starts getting out of the car. I thought he was just getting out to get back in the driver's seat, but instead, he closes the door and he leans against it, putting both his hands in his pockets and he just stares at me. I can't see his face because directly across the road there's a street light, so only his silhouette is visible. After maybe 30 seconds of this staring, I get too creeped out and I pull the curtain shut again and I call my mom. She's concerned and says to deadbolt the door and if he does anything else or just doesn't get back in the car to call the police, which I agree to do when she hangs up. Finally, an agonizing two minutes later, I work up the nerve to peek out again, and he's still just standing there, staring. Now, I actually start dialing the number for the police, and just as I go to hit the call button, he abruptly looks up towards my neighbor's house and jumps back in his car. I find out the next day it's because my neighbor opened the front door and looked out at him. Apparently, he noticed the weird car guy too, but the weird car guy still didn't leave. He continues to sit in his car looking towards my house until 6 in the morning. I stayed up this entire time because I couldn't sleep. I don't know exactly when he decided to drive away, but the last time I checked it was 6. Also, looking back, 
I'm not sure why I didn't continue calling the police. So anyway, finally, I go to bed and I try to write it off as just a weird dude. For the next few days, I spend the night at my friend's house and just keep busy because it was the summer holidays. When I get home, my mom tells me that every day since I've been gone, a blue car has driven past the house really slowly and taunt, but she doesn't recognize the driver. And when she walked outside to take a picture of the car on the license plate after it had driven by four times, it sped away. She called the police and reported the weird behavior, as well as gave a description of the vehicle, and they said that they would keep an eye out for it, and any other incidents involving a car matching our description. Two weeks after this, the car is parked outside of my house again, but no one is inside, and it sits there until it's towed away. And that's it. I never received an explanation beyond that the car was stolen over three months ago in a town nearly five hours away. It was truly one of the weirdest, creepiest, unexplainable things that I've ever experienced.